and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal O and this is basically um, a Q&A about marriage. So I had posted on my Insta story about questions that you guys had for me in terms of marriage um, and I'm going to be answering them today. I actually have a video um, that I recorded before this video and this is basically the part two. Um, the part one was more so about the three things that nobody told me about before getting married or the three, the three things nobody talks about before you get married or tells you about however you want to phrase that but um, today I'm gonna to do a Q&A based off of your questions on my Instagram and they were so good y'all ask such good questions all the time so I'm always excited to answer them because I'm like y'all just be firing the questions away okay if you are not following me on Instagram follow me because I am so active on my Insta story well I'm usually active on my Insta story and I'm typically always asking for feedback or doing Q&A's to see how I can interact more with you all. So follow me on there if you want to stay in touch more. All right, so the first question is, have you guys gone into a routine yet? I haven't and I'm a newlywed myself. So honestly, I would say that we are always working on a routine. We're always working on ways in which we can do better with our routine. We're about four months into our marriage, so I definitely understand um, just the struggle of trying to get a routine um, in, but I would say that we do have a routine in place. Um, we have like responsibilities in our household, so we have kind of shared those. Like, okay, you do A, B, C, D, I do D, E, F. Like, that's kind of what we ended up doing um, because we know that if we just expect one person to do all these things, it's going to get really burdensome and really overwhelming. So honestly, I would say have those hard conversations. Talk to yourself and say, hey, like, let's have a routine that's actually going to work. And also just show yourself grace in that routine, I would say. Um, for us, we have this routine of whoever who gets out of the bed last makes the bed. And we've noticed that we kind of alternate on that and no one like gets out of bed last all the time. So it's not like, it's not like this unfair, like, haha, you always get out of the bed last, so you're always gonna make it last kind of thing. But um, it's kind of shared, like it's all shared. And when it comes to like household responsibilities, we share those as well so that one person doesn't feel oh, super overwhelmed. Um, the next question is, how do you guys deal with arguments? I would always honestly say that there's no one way that we deal with all our arguments. Sometimes we're super petty and <laughs> our arguments go nowhere. Sometimes we just don't handle our arguments well at all. We actually need like outside intervention. That's why we have mentors. But I would say that on a good day, we handle our arguments by just being super vulnerable and saying like, hey, you really hurt me and this is how I feel right now. Or this is how, this is how the situation has made me feel. Um, and just being raw and vulnerable with your spouse and not seeing them as an enemy um, but seeing them as an ally and someone that you love and someone that um, you know wouldn't intentionally hurt you um, so that's typically how we get through most of our arguments or one of us would just like literally just um, humble ourselves and be like hey I love you or hey are you hungry or hey how can I serve you like we'll have to humble ourselves and just say like this fight isn't worth our peace in the home this fight this petty fight if anything isn't worth um, us going to bed mad at each other but I think that there's definitely lots of different ways but communication will always be an important factor in resolving arguments do you feel like you and Yinka's callings align um, this is actually like a really good question because I've gotten this a quite a few times um, I would definitely say that our callings both merge we both have a merging point I would say that God has called us to the exact same thing but I would say that in God calling us to what he's called us to we merged very well which is beautiful because like him he has a heart for people he has a heart for God he has a heart for ministry he has a heart for justice and honestly I've seen that so much in my life as well um, I would say like three years ago I didn't have such a big heart for justice but after starting my social work program I grew a really really bigger heart for justice and for those who are oppressed so it's like as we continue to like journey together it's crazy how God is like literally merging our purposes and merging our callings which is pretty amazing I think that also us being different and unique is also a blessing because we can now come together and literally add our gifts and put them on the table and say Let, let's work let's get to work you know so I think there's beauty in differences but also beauty in that merge of seeing eye to eye with someone and understanding that you guys are both called according to the purposes that God has called you to how did you prepare to become a wife in your singleness what things did you you do that's what it says what things did you do so um, I honestly wouldn't say that I prepare to become a wife I think that your first 
and foremost tasks should be preparing to be a better child of God, um, preparing to be a better um, daughter in Christ, honestly. I think that when you grasp a hold of that and you literally are walking in that, it makes it so much more easier to become a wife or to be a wife, period. I think that when we're obedient in who God is calling us to be and obedient in what he's calling us to, it makes you know being a wife or becoming a wife or whatever terminology you want to use around that so much more easier because we've won been able to surrender to Jesus and have been able to serve others around us well. So instead of like thinking more so about how do I become a wife, how do I become a wife, like that's such a limited window, it's such a limited like scope of who God is and who he's calling you to be as a woman, period. I think um, the main focus should be just how can I be a better woman in Christ, period. I was single as a Pringle, was not looking for a man because I was so done with men, um, but just being focused on what God is calling you to and, and just um, wanting to grow closer to him. Like wanting Jesus, not for a spouse, but for just Jesus, like just for Jesus. Um, so yeah, I would just say that when you're preparing, prepare to be a woman of God. Start there and I think that God will add the rest to you as he equips you and as he sends someone to you, um, if that's his will. And I would also say that there are so many things um, that you can do now to grow yourself as a child of God, as a woman of God. How are you serving people? How are you loving people? How are you um, surrendering the, in the little? How are you literally like giving up in the little things? How are you loving in the little? How are you forgiving in the little? Um, ask people around you like, how do you see me as? Like, what 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 do I come off as? And I think that these things all guide you towards understanding who you are as a person. Of course, what people say about you isn't going to be the end all be all, but it it, it could be an important factor if it's someone that you trust. Um, so just getting that extra piece of information about who you are is helpful as well. Um, do you think I am graceful? Do you think I am servant hearted? Do you think I'm I love unconditionally? These questions are good with helping and refining us as people, but better yet, as people of God. Um, so I would just say, yeah, those are just a few tips of encouragement that I would give you um, when it comes to preparing um, to be a wife or how, how that would work. So the next question is abstinence before marriage and what were your boundaries? So I'm going to go ahead and link our video that we did kind of talking a little bit about that um, below in my description bar. So check it out when you have a second. What is your take on virginity? Um, I think virginity is a beautiful thing. I think that there is no shame in being a virgin and that there is no shame in not being a virgin. I think that God can redeem both. Um, and I think that um, virginity is sacred. And I think that there's so much more to purity than just remaining a virgin. I think that sometimes we can see virginity as this like, I am so holy, I am so pure, but there's so much more to purity than just virginity. So um, I would just say, yeah, it's beautiful, it's a gift. Um, and even, even if you're not a virgin, that's still a gift because God redeems that and you can still go into a period of um, abstinence and waiting on who God um, desires for you to marry if that's your calling, if God is calling you to marry. Um, so yeah, it's beautiful, it's a gift and yeah. So someone said birth control, trying to figure out what to do before the wedding. So I talked a lot about birth control in my last video, like the part one video. So I'm going to link that down below um, so you guys can check that out. Birth control is this, this whole other world of like literally discovery. So I talked more in detail about that in my last video. But if you have any more questions, um, particularly pertaining to birth control, you can leave them down below and I would be more than happy to try to answer them. Okay, so the next question is how to be a supportive wife. So I think that that being supportive period starts like when you're dating and I would say whenever me and Yinka were dating um, I learned just basically his um, the love language like basically like what's his love language and how can I serve him um, in a way that he will be receptive to that and see that I love him so um, one of my husband's um, top love languages is words of affirmation so I have learned that through words of affirmation I can better support him and better encourage him through hard things or just um, give him an extra boost when he feels like super low so in our marriage for example um, how I support Inga would be like going to his well these are things that I love to do regardless so um, going to his events Supporting him whenever he's like doing sermon prep or maybe even listening to his sermons whenever he um, Needs a listening ear to kind of run run his like words by or his sermon sermons by so I think that um, There are definitely just little things that you can do to support, you know your spouse And I think that it just starts with knowing them better and knowing what they would like 
what they define support as. I feel like sometimes we do stuff for people, but but they may not see it as support. So I would definitely say like have have a discussion with your spouse um, or your boyfriend or whoever, and make sure that um, y'all have an equal understanding of what support looks like both ways. Not just oh I'm doing all this stuff for you and I'm supporting you. Why don't you understand that? But um, no, you both kind of having that understanding because I think Yinka and I really had to make sure that we're on the same page with what it looked like to be supported. Like share my stuff when I post the boo. Uh, you know, come to my events when I preach love. Like just like having this mutual understanding of what it means to support each other and being honest and open about discussing when we don't feel as supported as we would like. This question says, how did you guys go about telling your parents you wanted to get married? You're your dad especially so I think for me I didn't particularly tell my dad I wanted to get married it was more so um, Yinka expressing that um, he's interested in marrying me to my father I think that it should be the guy like expressing the interest first um, to be honest I think my dad kind of had a feeling that I really really liked Yinka because I was always just like what do you think about Yinka what do you think about Yinka but um, it was Yinka that initially was like I really you know I'm really interested in your daughter and I'm really interested in pursuing this till marriage like I actually like talking to my dad about that so um, yeah it wasn't like me telling him but um, Yinka and my dad built a really really good rapport and relationship so it really helped um, in him easing his way into like I want to marry your daughter you know <laughs> so um, yeah I would think that if a guy's intentional he'll tell your father himself he wouldn't really need you to tell your father um, but that's just my take on it so don't quote me or quote me, either one. He says, what are your plans on having children? Love you, by the way. Love you too. But um, our plans on having children are like super open these days. Like we could have one tomorrow and be okay with it, honestly. But um, our goal is like just wait a one year, have like a one year period um, until we actually start popping up little babies. But um, yeah, that's really just the plan. I love, love, love kids, y'all. Like I have baby fever every single day. But I'm just gonna push on and wait until we hit that one year mark. I don't know if we're gonna meet an, or make it or not, but um, regardless, God will be good and God will be great and my kids will be beautiful, so it don't really matter. I thought this question was really sweet, even though it's like not a question, but this person said, this is not a question, you're really cool and you're one of my YouTube role models. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Like you guys don't understand how much your encouragement um, means to me like how much it means like literally um, so don't ever think that your words are falling on deaf ears I literally see it I hear it and it I literally take it to heart so it means a lot to me guys I'm gonna answer one more question and this question is did you think about marriage before you met Yinka a lot or did you try not to think about it so I would honestly say that I did not think about it as much before I met Yinka. Now I thought about it, I did think about marriage, but it wasn't this like, I'm burning to get married. Like I did have moments in my life where I was like, I just wanna get married, God. Like I just wanna have a family already. Like I was just so pressed for a, a man's, okay? I was pressed. But I think that through that, God taught me that I really, really need like time alone with him. I really need time dedicated to like seeking him and pressing deeper into him before like not even before man but just pressing into him period like press into Jesus press into God like that was like literally what I feel like God was teaching me because I had been on such a really really like just crazy path of like serial dating and just like dating whoever popped up and oh he looks good looks like he loves the Lord let's date him like that that wasn't cute anymore okay so I was like Jesus like I need to focus on you. I'm aware that I need to to literally like place my all in you and not place it in another man or place it in like just the value that I got from having a man. So um, I didn't think about it in terms of I want a man, I want a man, I want a man. It was like a futuristic thought like yeah of course I want to be married someday but right now I really want to press into Jesus and focus on that. Um, before any any other thing any other man because I know that right now I'm not I don't feel like my value is coming from Jesus it's coming from being in a relationship so that was kind of my mindset whenever I um, initially was single and focused on Jesus and that was it 
But um, yeah, guys, um, I really enjoyed this q and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope that it's been helpful and I hope that I was able to answer most of your questions. I did not get to all of them. I'm so sorry. It's just a lot and I don't want to make this video like an hour long. Um, but if this video was helpful, comment below. Um, make sure you give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. And I will see you guys in my next video.